Hey everybody and welcome back to Not Yet Week 3. Now this is going to look a little bit different because for the first two sessions of Not Yet, our teaching series in the month of January, we did them on site here in the youth theater, but for the next two sessions, we're gonna do a little bit of a condensed session, uh, and they'll be right back to back available on YouTube whenever you wanna watch them. And we're gonna be continuing the series, but again, kind of condensed sessions. But here's the thing, at the end of each of these next two sessions, we're gonna have some reflection questions for you to think about. And so what I want you to do is either pause now and get a notepad and take some notes while you're going, or at the end, when I give you the three reflection questions, I want you to have a notepad ready. I want you to take some time, maybe take five minutes and think about those questions today and again when you think about it throughout the week because I think these are things for us to, to digest and there's a lot of information that you're getting but it's really good to take those reflection questions and just reflect on where you're at in terms of the content here. Now when it comes to our lives I think we all make plans that just don't come to happen. They fall through, things don't happen the way we want them to but then when it comes to like the biggest plans that we have for own, our own lives when those plans don't happen it's a really big deal. And I think that's especially true when we're not only just thinking about our plans for the future, but when we're asking that question, what is God's plan for our future? There's enough pressure as it is when we're coming up with plans for our future, what we're gonna do after middle school, what we're gonna do after high school, all those questions. But then when we take into account what God wants, that only adds to the pressure. So I think we have to ask ourselves that question, does God actually have a plan for our future? And if so, do we have a say in that plan? How do we find out what those plans are? And then finally, like what happens when God's plan doesn't align with the plan that we have for ourselves? It's pretty cool because we can look throughout pretty much all all of scripture and we see different people's stories where they were trying to understand and trust and follow God's plans for their lives. Sometimes we see these stories of people who could put complete trust in God and then when they do something incredible happens with the plans that God has for them. Sometimes we see stories of people who really struggled to see what God's plan was for their future. And then sometimes we look at stories of people like in the book of Psalms that we're going to look at tonight where people are reflecting and praying about God's plans for their lives. So we're going to look at Psalm chapter 40 verses 1 to 5 and hear what it says. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me and he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and in the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust in the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or, who the, or those who worship in idols. Oh, Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans are too numerous to list. You ha have no equal. If I tried to recite all of your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Now, we might not know exactly what David was experiencing when he wrote this song in the book of Psalms, but here's what he observed about God throughout this process. Even when life is confusing or difficult, God can be trusted. David could look back and see God at work in his life. He could see the pattern of God answering his prayers and being with him everywhere he went. And so as he reflected on the past, I think this, there was this understanding that he could then look toward the future and trust that God would be with him wherever he went going forward. Now, in this psalm, it doesn't say exactly what God's plans were specifically, but that's okay. By seeing the pattern of God at work in the past, he knew that that trust could be carried forward into the future and that he could trust him ongoing. By looking at the past and recognizing that God had been so good to him and his people, David recognized that he could trust God going forward, even though he didn't know exactly what God's plans were. Now we're going to flip forward towards the New Testament to a story where God was revealing his plans, but they just didn't make sense to the person that was hearing them. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 to 23, we see Jesus interacting with one of his closest disciples, Peter, and Peter doesn't quite get it. So let's read it together. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the son of man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, You are blessed, Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. 
Now I say to you what I, that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon your rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven, and whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then he sternly warned the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. But it continues on at verse 21. From then on, Jesus began to tell his disciples plainly that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and that he would suffer many terrible things at the hands of the elders, the leading priests, and the teachers of religious law. He would be killed, but on the third day he would be raised from the dead. But Peter took him aside and began to reprimand him for saying such things. Heaven forbid, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to Peter and said, Get away from me, Satan. You are a dangerous trap for me. You are seeing things merely from a human point of view, not from God's. I think we see two interesting things happening in this passage. First, Jesus is giving Peter this inside scoop on what was going to happen and how Jesus was going to build his church using Peter. The Bible doesn't say how Peter responded to this news, but it's pretty safe to say that Peter was pretty excited about what he was hearing Jesus say. But then in verse 21, Jesus continues on going deeper into his plans about what God was going to do. And it's safe to say that the second part of the plans didn't seem nearly as good as the first part of the plans. Peter just couldn't understand why it was that Jesus had to die. It seemed like Jesus' death would actually totally mess up those first part of the plans that Peter was going to be involved in. In Peter's mind, Jesus' plan for the future didn't make sense to him. It didn't make sense that Jesus would die. How would he build his church using Peter if he was dead? This just didn't sound like something that God would do. But of course, we know that Jesus knew far better than Peter, and actually Jesus' death would mean good news. Of course, Jesus' death was a painful experience for so many people, including himself, but he recognized that after that would be resurrection and it would be the start of God's church and something beautiful, a new relationship with humanity. Peter thought that this news of Jesus' upcoming death would interfere with God's plan, but in reality it was an essential part of what God was up to. But here's the thing, we can't blame Peter for being scared and unsure about this plan. I think we all have that when the future seems scary and uncertain. But maybe Peter's reaction would have been a little bit different if he had just heard the words that we heard from David in the book of Psalms. Maybe if he had remembered those words, he would recognize that even when things seem difficult or confusing, God can be trusted. In the past, Peter had seen Jesus do so many good things in his own life and in the life of others. And so if we take that pattern of Jesus being good, we can recognize that Jesus would be good in Peter's future as well. And what was true for David as he was writing Psalms and true for Peter as he was dealing with this uncertainty is true for us as well. The same God that could be trusted with their futures can be trusted with our futures too. As God reveals his plans to us, even if they seem confusing or they don't seem right to us, they are full of hope and promise. One of the hard things in life is that when we're trying to figure out the answer to all our questions about the future, we feel like we should just be able to open up the Bible and it become clear that this is exactly what we need to do. But I don't know that the Bible does that exactly. I think what the Bible does is shows us God's pattern of success, God's pattern and his promises in recognizing that even when we might not know the specifics of what God's plan is, we can trust that it's good. So as I promised at the beginning, here is what I want you to do. I want you to take a notepad out and I want you to reflect on three questions. The first thing is I want you to reflect on the question, what are you wondering, hoping, or fearing about your future? But then the second question is, how has God been good to you in the past? And the third thing is, why do you trust God with your future? Take some time to reflect on those questions, and I'm trusting that God will continue to reveal himself to you, what he's done in your past, and what he'll do in your future. Because here is the truth. The future can be scary, but we can trust that God's plans are so good.